recording. Share screen. Okay. Trying out different designs, but uh, I don't know if this. Uh, this is the best, but at least it's a new one. Uh, all right, so welcome to the 14th uh, lecture of my classical Greek uh, introductory course. And uh, today we are going to overview the last paradigms uh, for the inflection of nouns. And uh, we are learning the paradigms for nouns with a stem ending in a diphthong in the nominative singular. The uh, examples we will look at especially are Basileus, uh, which means king, and Zeus. Uh, you find the inflection of these uh, nouns on pages uh, 58 and 59, sections uh, 484 and 486 in the Cambridge Grammar of Classical Greek. Further, uh, we will overview the inflection of some nouns with uh, original stems uh, ending in alpha and digamma, uh, which means an au sound, and uh, those ending in an omicron and a digamma, which uh, is an au sound. The examples we deal with here are on the one hand nows, which means ship, and uh, on the other hand bus, which means uh, cow or bull. This uh, you find on page uh, 59, section 486 in the grammar. Finally, uh, we are also going to look uh, at the inflection of the noun heros, meaning uh, hero, which uh, you find on page uh, 60, section 489 in the grammar. This uh, noun has an original stem uh, ending in omega followed by a digamma, but uh, as usual, the digamma has disappeared uh, after having, uh, after uh, uh, their classical age. Okay. Well, uh, after, after having dealt with uh, the nouns, we continue with syntax uh, and start uh, looking at the so-called separative genitive. And uh, thereafter, we, we move on to uh, genitives of time. And finally, we are today also going to overview the use of the absolute genitive, the genitivus absolutus. These uh, consist of uh, phrases with a participle in the genitive, often together with a noun or pronoun, uh, which is in the genitive case too. As those of you know, uh, who have studied Latin, these uh, constructions are paralleled uh, in the Latin ablativus, absolutus constructs. But without further ado, let us move on to the first topic of today, which is uh, third declension nouns with the nominative singular ending in eos. Uh, there are many of these uh, kinds of nouns in Greek, and uh, especially na uh, names like uh, Zeus and Odysseus are, uh, are known, commonly known. Words uh, of this kind, uh, the ones ending in eus in the nominative singular, uh, are also all masculine. Mm, but this, uh, our first example, uh, basileus, uh, is actually one of the oldest attested words in Greek, since uh, it occurs uh, already in uh, the Mycenaean Greek tablets from the second millennium BC. These uh, tablets uh, were written uh, in a pre-alphabetic script called Linear B, uh, by the way, and uh, this script uh, system was uh, decoded first uh, uh, in the 1950s. Anyway, 
As I said, uh, the original stem of uh, Basileus uh, ended in an eta, uh, followed by a digamma, so eu. And this uh, original eu stem uh, is still palpable in the nominative form Basileus, whereas uh, the other numbers and case cases show less uh, traces of the original digamma. Although uh, historically there have been quite a few sound changes here as a result of uh, the disappearance of the digamma, uh, which we do not have to deal with, however. But uh, this is how this is this now is inflected. So uh, in the nominative singular we have basileus, then in the genitive basileos, in the dative basilei, in the acoustic basilea, and in the vocative basileo. And then in the plural we have in the nominative basileus or the alternative form, later form, uh, basileis. And then in the genitive uh, we have basileon. In the dative basileusin and in the accusative basileas and then also this uh, later uh, alternative basileis which is uh, identical with this uh, basileis. So uh, this basileis you find usually in, in or this earlier form you find usually in, in Homeric Greek for instance and then in classical Greek you generally find this later alternative forms. And then, of course, the vocatives in the plural are again uh, identical with the, uh, with the nominative. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on to the next paradigm directly, which is that of Zeus. So <clears throat> we may note here, first of all, that we have uh, two different stems uh, according to which the word is inflected. On the one hand, we have uh, this uh, GL uh, from which the nominative and the vocative forms derive. And then we have uh, the variant DU uh, from which the rest of the cases have been formed. But uh, this is how Zeus is inflected. In the nominative singular, we have Zeus, in the genitive Dios, uh, in the dative DE. Uh, in the accusative dia and also the alternative form zena, zena uh, from this uh, from this stem, and then we have in the vocative zeu, and then the plural forms of course don't exist because this is a personal name. Okay, uh, let's move on directly then to the following and the concluding set of. Uh, third declension nouns, namely those with the stem, stem ending in how or o oh sound. And uh, we begin with the former, where we have the example nouns. And here we may, uh, may note uh, the original nominative singular form, which uh, has actually been uh, nouns with a long alpha followed by a digamma. But uh, in Attic Greek, as per usual, the, the long alpha changed to an eta, uh, that is to neus, and then back to a short alpha when the digamma disappeared uh, and was replaced by y, so naus, the classical form. The original long alpha is uh, retained uh, in Western Greek dialects, uh, also in the classical age, however. But uh, this is how this uh, word is uh, inflected in Attic Greek. So in the nominative singular, we have naus, uh, in the genitive, neos, in the dative, ne, and uh, in the acoustic, now. And then the vocative form is now. And then in the plural, we have in the nominative, nes, uh, in the genitive, neon, in the dative, nausin, and in the accusative nows, and then the vocative is nes, as the nominative as well. Okay, the last pairing of today, which is uh, heros, and means uh, hero or demigod. And uh, here, as 
has also been an original the gamma in the stem but uh, this letter disappeared without a trace so this word is uh, inflected as follows we have uh, heros in the nominative singular uh, heros or hero in the genitive heroi or hero in the dative and hero or hero in the accusative and then vocative identical with the nominative form here and then in the plural we have in the nominative heroes or heros in the genitive hero on in the dative hero sin and in the accusative hero us or heroes and then the vocative is heroes or heroes like the nominative Okay, that actually concludes our survey of uh, third declension nouns for today and uh, for this whole course, actually. But uh, we still have some syntax today to look through. So uh, we begin with the separative genitive, the so-called genitivus separativus, which is uh, used together with verbs uh, with the meaning of uh, to separate, uh, to detach, or to deprive, and the like. Uh, in English, the separative genitive is often best translated with uh, a prepositional phrase. So that's, for instance, the Greek phrase ek tina tu oiku could be translated as uh, uh, to throw someone out of the house. But uh, on the other hand, uh, some phrases with uh, separative genitives can also be translated uh, into English uh, with a phrase containing a regular accusative object. Uh, so for instance, the phrase uh, deo mai tinos uh, can be translated as, uh, as uh, I need uh, something, or could also be I need someone if this indefinite pronoun would be mean someone rather than something. Uh, but this indefinite pronoun is in the genitive case, of course. Yeah, and then uh, additionally, certain adjectives uh, with uh, separative meaning uh, also connect to a separative genitive. So for instance, the adjective diaphoros which means uh, different uh, stands together with the separative genitive, like uh, in the phrase diaphoroston uh, allon, different from the rest, which I have left out from this PowerPoint for some reason. Okay, uh, the next genitive used, and we have three different genitive uses today on the agenda. So the next, next is uh, the genitive of time, or genitivus temporis in Latin. And we have encountered the accusatives of time before, uh, but the genitive case uh, can be used to express time as well. And uh, the genitivus temporis is uh, usually used uh, to express the time period within which uh, a certain action or happening takes place. And we have some uh, examples of phrases containing genitives of time on the screen. So, uh, for instance, this epiuses nyktos can be translated during the following night. Uh, and to, to menos or to menos uh, could mean each month or also possibly uh, once a month. And theros, which uh, is the genitive singular form of to theros, uh, which means summer, can mean in the summer. So the genitive, uh, when used to exp express time, actually functions uh, as an adverbial. Okay, let's move on to the absolute genitive, 
then, uh, which uh, involves uh, participles in the genitive case. So, uh, so far we have uh, mainly been dealing with uh, the most common use of participles in Greek, which, uh, as you may remember, was uh, that of the participium conjunctum, uh, the conjunct participle. And in these conjunct participles, uh, the, the participle connects directly to a head word, uh, which can be a noun or a pronoun. And uh, the participle then uh, stands in the same gender, number and case as the word that it connects to. And we see an uh, example uh, of the of the participium uh, conjunct, uh, conjunctum here on the screen. So we have here uh, apantesa Filippo Basileo Basileo Anti, uh, which could be translated as I met Philip when he was king. So here the present active participle. Uh, in the masculine dative singular, Basileo Anti, correlates uh, with the noun Filippo, which uh, also stands in the masculine dative singular. So these two, this particip conjunct participle here has uh, connects to this head word Filippo, and they are both in the masculine dative singular. But uh, in the absolute genitive, on the other hand, uh, it's the case that uh, the participle stands on its own, which means that uh, it does not depend on any other part of the clause. Although uh, it uh, may form a clause in itself uh, together with the pronoun or a noun, which uh, uh, is then also in the genetic case. So uh, an example of an uh, of an absolute genitive uh, is found in the sentence Filippo Basileontas Apentesa Diogene, which uh, could be translated as uh, I met uh, Diogenes when uh, Philip was king. So here, as you can see, the, the, the genitive construction uh, Filippo Basileontas with the present active participle, uh, Basileontos, in the masculine genitive singular, does not depend on any other part of the clause. And uh, this is also why the genitive is called absolute. In fact, the genitive construction, uh, Filippo Basileontos, uh, is used here instead of a temporal subordinate clause which uh, we will encounter examples of later. Another example of an absolute genitive use, uh, where the absolute genitive is used instead of a, uh, instead of a temporal clause, uh, is found in the, in the sentence uh, Basileos machomenu tois persais paideo tus paidas autu, which could be translated as while the king fights uh, against the Persians, I educate his children. And actually here, uh, the participle in the genitive case, uh, also takes a dative object, this tois persais. So this uh, is a possibility as well. That is that the participle in the absolute genitive construction functions uh, like a normal verb form in that it uh, takes an object. And the reason why the object uh, is here in the dative and not in the accusative is of course that uh, Mahamai generally takes a dative object, which uh, you can see if you look, look uh, in a dictionary. That was all for today, but uh, I would like to end this lecture by showing a picture of one of my favorite classicists, which uh, is the late Thomas McEvely. So his main work, uh, at least in the 
in the field of classics is uh, the shape of ancient thought. And in this work, he argues for a wide ranging diffusion of ideas between the ancient Greek and ancient Indian cultural spheres already in the classical age of Greek. So before uh, the conquests, conquests of uh, Alexander the Great, at uh, which point in time, uh, Greek knowledge of or true Greek knowledge of India is usually usually supposed to have uh, transpired. So this uh, Thomas Machiavelli is quite an odd figure in the classical world because he's still, even though he's he has passed ten years ago, he, there are quite a few uh, professors who detest him. Uh, among others, there is a Finnish professor. Uh, whose name is Klaus Kartonen, professor in Sanskrit, who is completely allergic to the name Thomas Machiavelli because he represents a complete opposite point of view from Klaus Kartonen's own uh, ideas of how, how this uh, interaction between India and Greece started and, and what kind of ideas uh, were transfused between them, if there even was anything like this. So this is quite interesting that, that uh, academic debates can become so heated that they sort of reach beyond the, the death of a, of, a, of a researcher and just continue. Uh, yeah, that was all for today. Let's, uh, Nigel, if you have time, we want to the to the chapter. Okay. And this right. Okay. Do you have any questions on this uh, material or this uh, lecture? No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, my my video is. I'm just starting my video. There we are. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so the first section. Um, yeah, wait, wait. Let me let me. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, get the get it screen up. and get the get the chapter on the screen. I should probably do it like this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, um, we have it here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So yeah, let's start with the with the uh, hexameter here, the two hex hexameter lines. Okay, so uh, seven cities compete for the birthplace of Homer. Smyrna, yeah. com well, compete or yeah, 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 um, and that's Smyrna, Rhodes, Colophon, Salamis, Chios, Argos, and Athens. Yeah. Exactly. So they all want to claim that uh, Homer was uh, born, born there. there. Yeah. That was that's the idea. Yeah. I was actually in uh, I was in in Smyrna on the agora there, and they had they had a sign also stating that actually it it had been uh, the, the Homeric problem had been solved and that he, <laughs> he was born, born here. He was there, yeah. <laughs> Are, are, do you know? For us, uh, do, have you uh, have you uh, practiced uh, like uh, reading hexameters in 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 the in the rhythm at all? We, uh, a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think the first uh, the first hexameter could maybe be something like Heptapoleis die ritsu sin peri ritsan homero. What do you think? Yeah, it sounds something like this, but it's it's not. Uh, there's many ways you can do it, but yeah, I would, I would do something like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, that was basically it. Yeah, I think it's now like, the next one, um, obviously, for fortune, Agatha Chunke is for fortune or for good luck, really. Mm, yeah, um, and then. I got a bit because it's Stratia is army, but that doesn't make sense. Yeah, 
I think it's the name, actually. But yeah, well, that's what I assumed, is it must be a yeah. name of somebody, because it didn't make any sense of the army giving gifts to the goddess Demeter for sight. It did. Um, so, yeah, Stratia, so um, Doron is gift. So, um, Stratia, for the, uh, well, it's, a, it's for the, for vision or for sight to the goddess yeah. Demeter a gift. So yeah, Stratia gives a gift to the goddess Demeter for vision. Exactly. So there is a, there is a verb uh, or predicate lacking in this. Uh, yes. Uh, inscription, but it's very common in inscriptions that the, yeah. the predicate is not there. So it would be, you, you can think some verb meaning give. Give, yeah. Gives. Uh, yeah, I presume they paid per word or something, so. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, and this is uh, yeah, this is in the in the dative. Uh, this Agatha uh, uh So you translated quite correct correctly. So it's like uh, probably probably an instrumental yeah. uh, or proper dative use, maybe more like for good fortune or something like mm -hmm. that. Just as I said, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's move on then. So. Uh, the Acropolis in Athens. Yeah, that's the title here. The Acropolis in Athens, yes. Yeah. Um, the Acropolis is part of the city of Athens. Yeah. Um, exactly. Um, then I took the Kai Kai, kai and said um, it is so it's both impossible, imp it is both impossible by nature. Yeah. S strong with high city walls. Yeah. And difficult to conquer with force. Yeah. Exactly. That's that would be a that would be a perfectly accurate translation, I would say. So this uh, there's lots of uh, uh, datives of uh, mode or uh, instrumental natives, however you like to see them. See them. Mm. This hip is in some instrumental native or native of mode, and then this also with strength is key, and uh, and this fiseo as well. So by nature, uh, true, or by its its high walls, and then by its strength, something like this. So yeah, uh, okay. Uh, then the next, the epi, um, so I couldn't work out who, is it Absudius uh, or Hapsudius, I couldn't work that out. So actually it's, uh, this is a genitive form, right? Uh, yes, of a noun. So uh, Apseudus would be uh, Apseudes in the nominative. nominative uh, so he was just the archon. Yeah, it's the name of, of the archont. Yeah. So, so uh, this is like the eponymous, eponymous, so-called eponymous archon. So the years in, in classical Athens were given their names uh, uh, based on who was the, the main archont. So it was just that that office was just called archont, I think, Ar archon. And he, he was the so-called eponymous archon. So that's why it's this isn't actually, although. I only took it, I only had it in this lecture, but this is uh, a genitive of time. time yeah. do archontos. So while Apseudes was arch archon. Yeah. yeah. And, and how would we continue? So the um, uh, Menesicles, who was the architect, I mean, they didn't say that, but that's who he was. Menesicles um, completed the Propylia. I put yeah. Manesic, I put Manesic, I changed it around. So Manesicles completed the Propylia during the rule of, the, or during the archonship of um, Absurdus, Absurdus. Yeah. Um, and then the next bit I put as this, so the, the, through this, uh, or and through this, we now uh, enter the Acropolis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a viable uh, translation. So, uh, this horn here, what, what word is it? Like, uh, um, it's uh, from Amy. Be, um, being. Uh, well, it's actually it's uh, 
Yeah, you, you thought of it as a participle. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually a relative pronoun. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it's like the meaning would be true which or something like this. Okay. Yeah, dia. There's an, there's an alpha here, of course, which has been yeah, dear uh, so yeah, that makes more disappeared. Sense. Yeah. yeah. So uh, always be careful about these relative pronouns because they sort of they exist they look a bit different mm. in different cases and numbers and so on. And, uh, maybe it could be a good thing to since we had the paradigm uh sometime some at some point lecture three or four to to try to rehearse them a bit the relative pronouns so they, since they seem to appear quite regular in in the texts so true which true which we still uh enter the acropolis or something like this mm -hmm. so this horn this relative pronoun it uh refers back to this propylia the proper yeah. the proper less that's it's correlate here in the main sentence so this is the main the main clause here and then the relative subordinate clause here with the relative pronoun horn refers back to the propylia true which referring to the, the propylia okay good uh, uh, then. so the next bit is um i said while well, it, because the men is what, although while the way up is very rugged. Yeah, that could be a, probably a tra tra is it, it can mean, I guess, uh, many different things. Uh, mm. I looked up in uh, LSE and uh, Philo Scott and Jones, and it gave uh, harsh, ragged, jagged, yeah. rough, yeah. any of these. Good work. Yeah. Okay. Sacking it down. <laughs> uh, have you, have you, Nigel, by the way, tried this, uh, this LSE, online LSG version? Which, uh, yes, yes. I've got, I've got the, I've got, so the, got right here, the for instance, I get, uh, when I reach Trache, then, but then I have to, because it's Trache is like this, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I, I, I use it to get it because I, I must yeah. have missed out that uh, I, I didn't find it, so I. I, had I think it was actually there. missing in the in the vocabulary, so I I entered. Ah, it. okay, that makes sense. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. this this can happen that some words. Uh, That's okay. I I just took it as as rugged. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, That's correct. Yeah. So while the way up is is very uh, rugged, um, then. This next bit is it. I I know see um, the people entering it. Well, yeah, yeah. So if you start with this s by noosi, yeah, it's a verb form, right? But what kind of verb form is it actually? Um. Well, I got I, I I had it as a present. Yeah, it's present. Uh, so, so it third, is present. I, I agree. Yeah, third person plural. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, it's uh, it's it's present tense, but it's actually an. Uh, and this is tricky because uh, this is this is a participle form. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, to me, it looked like third person plural. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's. Uh, it is uh, formally identical, but it's uh, um, since it's uh, it's a dative form, dative participle form. It's it's okay. formally ad identical with uh, uh, so dative plural uh, participle form uh, in the in the present active anyway. So. Uh, yeah. It's dative. It has to be some reason why it's in the in the dative. Okay, so it, it's maybe it's it could be an um, a kind of proper dative. So for for the ones entering or something like okay. that. Okay, for the ones entering. Yeah. yeah. It's well, for the ones entering it. It is a brilliant sight. Exactly. Yeah. Um, for the ones entering, the sight is brilliant or something like this. Yeah. Just like you said, and then. Um, the whole 
uh, well, Attica, the whole of Attica appears. Yeah. Is present, yeah. Um, and the sea and the city below. Exactly, yes. That's it. Um, and then, and while in the past the Acropolis uh, was the home, like homes, well, the Acropolis were, were the homes of, was the homes of, <laughs> yeah. While in the past, the kings and yeah, it was the homes of yeah while in the past the, the acropolis um was i mean i suppose we would say was home to but was yeah this is uh, uh, which is the, understood as king here mm. uh this basile actually means um um a palace so it's the resident <sighs> But Basileus is uh, king, and then Basileia, if if the uh, uh, accent would be here, mm -hmm. the acute accent would be here on the on the a, then it would be mean kingship. So when the accent is here, Basi, Basileia, then it means palace. Okay, that's a bit tricky. But uh, so, and then in the beginning we had endete acrop and endete acropole. Uh, so we have this. Uh, we have to take into account this uh, preposition here in. Yeah. So in the Acropolis or on the Acropolis. Something. On the Acropolis. In the, on the Acropolis. Yeah. Um, Before or in the past or long time ago. The, was uh, the, the palace. Yeah. Or the palaces. Yeah. Was exactly. Mm. It was. So this is imperfect form of. Yeah. <clears throat> so the palaces and the home homes of Peristratus or right here. Yeah. The home of Peristratus, exactly. Yeah. Peristratus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the home of the tyrant, Peristratus yeah. was there. Yeah. Um but and uh, so I presume this means in well, I mean it says in democracy, but it must be um in the in the time of democracy, or uh, yeah, into democracy. Uh, yeah, it could be it could be during the democracy, or yeah, that's yeah. probably the best translation. During the but during the democracy, during the democracy, yeah, um, it, it was the possession of the gods alone. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so if you go still back here to this uh, ta, uh, this ta basileia kai hetu pesis mm. oikea. So this uh, ta here, I think, uh, uh, includes both the basileia and the oikea. So mm. the palace and the house of uh, Pesistratus. Okay. But uh, uh, during the, the during democracy, it was the possession of gods alone, like you said. And um, so the gods alone full of temples and altars and statues. Exactly. So this, these were all in the, in the genitive uh, material. Yeah. Um, um, then so still, the ruins of the Parthenon and of the Erechtheion um, and the Temple of Nike um, amaze us. Yeah, amaze us, uh, amaze us um, wonderfully, or uh, yeah, wonderfully. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably. A good yeah. translation of Deinos here. Uh, Little Scott and John Sky wondrously, but probably wonderfully yeah. is completely much better. So, yeah. 
And this, if you go back here to players now, the the reason why it's uh, here in the in the genetic case, all of this is that they are like partitive genetics. So yes. it's like full of something, full of of uh, temples and full of altars and full of statues. Then you give that of which uh, it's full of is given in the genitive. Uh, but we have we had those kind of genetics before. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna send you all of you and I've written my own written trans translation of this as well. It's still the last bit. Or? Oh yeah, the start, last bit. Let's take the last bit as well. Um, yeah, I, I mean, as I put as the um, the Calabese had. I mean, I just found this was a, a sort of a list of things, but they had. Um, breastplates of linen yeah and greaves and helmets and and then um the sword Macharian, so it's it's a sword along with a girdle is that para yeah well, because we have this para so by para this preposition para uh, by or at at the girdle or at at the belt yeah. At the belt, yeah. They had, an, the they had a sword, sword or, or a knife yeah. or something. Yeah. And this, um, and this uh, thorax can mean breastplate, as you said, that, uh, made of linen. As mm. you said. Thorax, I think, could also have found an, a meaning of, of thorax, which would be a coat. So maybe it could be an, they had a coat of linen makes, in this makes case. Makes more sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And knem is, uh, which is here in the, uh, in the, uh, Accusative plural. Um, yeah. How did you translate knemis? What did you have? I, uh, I said greaves. Greaves, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Could also be leggings or something like mm, that. Yeah, maybe leggings. Uh, but yeah, and this crown, exactly as you said, helmet. So helmets. Uh, and then also by the girdle or by the on the belt they had, a, they carried a knife yeah. or sword. Um, Machaira is. Uh, Sword, but then the diminutive form here. So machairion, when it's when it ends in o n uh, and uh, noun form, then it's usually diminutive. So it's a smaller sword, a little sword, okay. little sword or a knife. Okay, uh, yeah. The last one then. The last one is, and they had spears 15 arms lengths long yeah okay this is also there is uh, plural form spears uh yeah good okay sir uh it was not the easiest again but uh <laughs> not, maybe not the most difficult either it's but uh, yeah, you, it's noticeable. I think that we're getting closer to the original Greek uh, language, and in the way that it's this is already the kind of uh, sentences and structures that you can encounter in in original uh, text. So yeah, great work. Okay, thank cool. you. Thank you. And see you next week. <laughs>